Interrupted the After Show, the podcast where we dive into the world of the popular novel, Rose City, by author Karina Q. In each episode, we will be discussing a different aspect of the book, from the complex characters to the intricate plot twists and everything in between. <laughs> Make sure to check out Rose City on Kindle Bella to stay up to date as we explore the unique perspectives and insight on the story. Today, we will start off with our quote of the day from Corwin Scott. Thank you for that sentiment. I appreciate being here today. The quote for the day is, I am not insulting you, I am describing you. Please follow me for more life hacks I will be happy to share on how you can fix your existence. Oodles. <laughs> okay, okay, sorry. I'm trying to keep it together. I'm trying to keep it together. Why we just love to have Corwin around because I wasn't expecting the life hack or the tools. But um, yeah, it works. All, All right, right folks. Oh, here. Seven. I'm sorry, Alicia. Oh. oh, okay. Sorry. All right, folks. So we are here at episode seven. It's Friday night, the club opening, part four. When all hell breaks loose, okay. So everybody, Mike, 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 what are our initial thoughts about Mike? I want to fight Mike. Yeah. That's my initial thought. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I uh, do not like Mike. Don't know why he's here. Don't know why he thinks he can show up and demand an audience with Malia. <clears throat> so... That's my thought. That's my initial thought. <laughs> Alicia, what are your thoughts on my... I, I, I kind of chuckled a little bit. This man is psychotic. Um, he's like, you stayed... You were, you wanted me. You waited for me. <laughs> and um, No, I don't like him. Toxic. Toxic, toxic, toxic. Reminds me of someone. Reminds me of someone from my past. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. Okay, well here we go. No, no, we we ain't going. <laughs> mm -mm. Okay, well I guess the car is gonna stay in the driveway. You know, I'll say this about Mike. You know, uh, I've kind of been in Mike's shoes, if you will. You know, sometimes you'll have a Betty that kind of got away from you because you were involved in some artistic expressions with other young ladies, and so it's unfortunate. However. Now, you ladies are beating up Mike, and I'm not going to lie. The brother is a bit on the aggressive, but let me ask you this question, though. Did Malia not say that everything that man was saying about her was right? Now, you guys can ponder and look up at the ceiling and say, well, hmm, and I'm going to be honest with you. You know, I've been in these circumstances where I have to tell a nice young bird, hey, Let's work this crazy thing out. You know what I mean? Because you love the kid. The kid loves you. I've made some mistakes. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, you want me. I want you, kind of, sort of. And we need to kind of get this thing back on track again. So, I mean, I dig it. Like I said, I do think that Mike is a bit on the aggressive side. But I will say, though, when you know the truth, when you know that a bird still loves you and she's acting corny or acting silly and yada yada sis boom bada it does kind of anger you now i in no way support any man grabbing or assaulting or doing anything to a young lady her body is her personal property and the man has no right to put his hands on her but i do understand where mike is coming from as far as for from for the emotions and uh because again you guys can roll your eyes if you want to but everything that the man was saying malia was like well, yeah, I mean, that is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how it be. So, Corwin, I'm so done. And you know what? I had, like, a little tiny ounce of hope. Like, I was like, I hope Corwin's going to read this chapter and be like, wow, is this some of the stuff that you ladies go through? Okay, so for the folks who don't know, we're going to fill you in a little bit. 
Where we left off last time is Malia got up from the VIP section after receiving multiple text messages from an unknown person. She decided, I just want to get some water. I want to get up out of here. You know, not anything bad. It was a lot of energy. She was very stimulated in this in this place, right? So she leaves. So she walks over to the bar. As she's waiting for her water with lime, a voice speaks to her. And it says immediately, she's like irritated, you know, it just invokes a lot of like bad feelings. So here in chapter seven, we figure out who this Mike guy is. Mike is Malia's longtime boyfriend. They dated all throughout high school and uh, most of college as well. He is a piece of work. I will say that I love this uh, chapter because Malia and Mike go at it at the club, at the bar. I mean, they are just going back and forth. And what Miss Misguided Corwin is talking about is Mike shows up, you know, and he's just like, hey, Mel, you know, you're looking good. And she's like, what do you want? This is the first time she's seen Mike in five years. So let's give a little backtrack here to it because in the chapter she's talking about and she confronts him about it mike decides that you know malia is no longer the girl of his dreams or whatever and he marries bianca ortega uh, a beautiful wealthy hispanic woman um in northern california whose father is being groomed for governor he's a supreme court judge Mike's family, this whole Rose City thing, everybody's all about status and power. So Mike's family was like, Malia was a good catch, but you know, this Supreme Court justice, him being groomed for um, the governor of California, possibly even looking for a bid for presidency, that's even better. Like we need to align this. So Mike is like, yeah, Bianca's gorgeous. She comes from the right kind of family. Let us rock with it. Mike does what Mike always does, and he Fs everything up. So now he is back home in Portland to take a new job as an assistant district attorney. He thinks because he has ruined his marriage and, and messed it up, hey, uh, where is that good-looking brownie that I had, you know, back in the day that I kept stringing along? You know, he was stringing her along big time. So what we see happening here is that Malia is kind of going in and out of of talking to him, but also having memories and reflecting on some of the things that he did. So everybody, Mike waits two weeks before the wedding to let Malia know, sorry, you've been replaced and I'm marrying somebody else. When that happened, you know, people love some juicy gossip and it set fire storms all across Rose City because everybody had always known that these two were going to be together. They came from the right types of families, his mother was pushing it. Her mother was pushing it. They're both attractive people. So they were like, why not, right? But yeah, all hell breaks loose. And at this point, he's back and he's ready to lay claim to a woman who doesn't belong to him anymore. And Mike seems to be very angry and offended and appalled that Malia's just not falling for the games. So ladies, did you have any more thoughts before we go into the questions? I would love to hear what you have to say. I just wanted to tell Corwin, just because he was right about what he was saying doesn't give him the right to say it. Especially after what he did. I agree. Uh, and to say, uh, oh, yeah, okay, let me chime in on that there. Um, that is, uh, yeah, let me chime in on, the, the, um, on that there, Blondie. I'm going to say that... Uh, Besides him putting his hands on her, he had, I mean, he didn't call her out of her name or even out of her race. So I'm going to be honest with him expressing to her the truth. You know, why is it that I'm not going to say all women, but a portion of women do not want to hear the facts. Now, the man was just giving her facts. He was giving her the truth. And she didn't want to hear it. Okay, because I see you down there with the head shakes, but the truth. We... Excuse me, Mel said that the guy knew her better than she wanted to let on. She said that she felt some kind of love for him that she thought wasn't even there. The man wasn't wrong. The man was wrong for how oh, no. he approached her with the hands he grabs, you know, your grabsy business. I mean, he shouldn't have gone, you know, have gone there. But as far as Miss Russia is talking about, the fact is, the man was correct for telling her, hey, baby, you know you want to be with this. And he wasn't lying. So we talking about he you. Was. He, 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 he shut up. Why not? Huh? 
he made the, okay he wasn't she hasn't been waiting for him she hasn't stayed single waiting for him to come back so he wasn't right he was in his head he was feeling himself he went and got married messed that up and now he wants to come destroy because he thinks he has claim over there now he wants to come into her life. So he's not, and he's not you know what exactly. but he, exactly he and, and, and you know I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship. I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship where you have been heavily involved, emotionally involved, and that relationship ends, especially for Malia's case. Two weeks before it, I mean, it, it ended. I mean, nothing happened. They didn't have a big fight. There was nothing explosive that, you know, happened. So she really had no reason to have a lot of ill feelings for him besides what he just did. You know what I'm saying? So outside of that, it's hard to um, just shut off 100% those feelings that you built up over time. I mean, they've known each other since they were kids, you know? And so you develop feelings over time and those dreams of what you thought was going to happen are still stuck with you. And then you're blindsided with, oh, sorry, I chose somebody else. You know, you're just like, uh... <laughs> I mean, you, you don't, you, you being in love with somebody doesn't just stop because they are an asshole, essentially, you know? So mm -hmm. I mean, that's where her mm -hmm. are still involved. And also, Corwin, time and place. He didn't have to make a scene at the club opening. He could have, hey, can I meet you for dinner? Hey, can I meet you for lunch? He could have stopped by her store. You know what I'm saying? Showed up with flowers and started off, I'm sorry, get on your knees, come groveling. Um, something more than, oh yeah, baby, uh-huh, I'm here, I know you want it, you know? Like, I'm here, you okay. wanted me, you've been waiting for me. No, none of that is true. And she's been daydreaming about somebody else knocking her out. So she ain't been waiting Not around for him or stayed single for him. She's actually looking for a Mr. Dream Lover. Dream Lover, huh? Yeah. Well, okay, well, Miss Russia is making the guy sound like Pepe Le Pew over here, but the truth be told is this. He met her in a neutral place. I think it was better for him to see her at the club and approach her than go to her shop. And then she's terrified that he's going to come back um, because he knows yeah, exactly yeah. where to find, to find her out. But I'm going to be honest with you, though, right? And I don't mean no disrespect, or maybe I do. I don't mean any disrespect, but there are a couple of young ladies currently, I'm not talking about one, but more than one, that uh, we've kind of had some of these similar situations where, you know, I wasn't always the best of people. And again, nothing physical. I'm talking about maybe I just wasn't um, um, as faithful as I sh should have been. And I could, you know, do a little bit of the mic, you know, hey, BB, what's going on with you? And kind of get things back on track. And even though it's been years, I'm going to be honest with you. And some of these women are still single. And you have to ask yourself, you are a pretty nice looking young lady. You got some things going for yourself. You know, you do, you know, excellent in business or whatever the case may be. So why are you, why are you, why are you still single? Now, the truth is she has an option, right? So it's not like she has to be with somebody. I'm just saying, if I was to come over with the Pepe Le a Pew voice, I'm telling you, after a couple of days and hey, BB, you know, we could be back in the full swing of things again. And that's just how it is. And men know it. Men know it. And men can smell it. Now, I will say this as a caveat. The only time that another man, that a man should not try that on a woman is when she is involved with someone else. Have the respect for your fellow lion to leave her alone because that's going to start a war and a beef that you may not want. But other than that, if she's still on the streets and whatnot, my, um, my guy, then I'm going to gonna have to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to, to, to I'm going to pull up, the, pull up in the charger and make it happen. But let me, uh, let me just go off mic, please. Tell you why. Just because what he said, um, and let's just be honest, it must be clear. Mike does know Malia very well. They do have a long history. They've been raised around each other their entire lives. They, they went to the same private school. They were in a relationship, okay? So, yeah, he does know a lot about her. However, just because you feel like you know certain clues about a person doesn't give you the right to feel like you can just kind of bombard them. The way he came to her, <clears throat> like Kyrie said, 
where was the I'm sorry, where was the groveling? Where was the hey, I, I know I didn't do you right and um, you know, I would love to maybe talk to you, kind of build a relationship. He came over, he was I mean, at one point, the dude thought he was King Kong. He was beating his chest, talking about something. And you ain't been with nobody since me. And, and, and I was your first. And that's hard to get over. Like, he came back talking, like, super tough. When she decided, no, Mike, I'm not interested anymore. What we have was undeveloped puppy love. I'm over you. Then he starts talking to her like, no, uh, uh, you're still on me. And then he starts to tell her that after all this time that they've been broken up, that he's been keeping tabs on her, which made me feel some kind of way. He said that he had a little bird or some type of source of information that let him know. He even brought the whole situation with Justin up. So this man who should have been married and faithful to his wife, okay, let's be honest, Mike, baby, baby, you chose your wife, honey, so you stay with Miss Ortega, okay? Y'all, y'all work that out. You have a child together and all that. No, 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 no. He's, you know, he, he's calling people up in Portland What's Malia doing? Did she gain me weight? Oh, she still look good. Oh, okay. Like, he's, why are you keeping track on your ex, sir? You, you, I thought you moved on. I thought you made, you know, a better arrangements. I thought you had something way better, but you still, you know, tracking her every move. And I'm sure it's not just Malia's every move. I'm sure he's tracking other people's move too. But again, it was the audacity to think that just because there was something, he still had feelings. He, he wasn't sure if she had feelings. And I'm going to be honest, it wasn't until Mike approached her and she seen him for the first time after five years that it dawned on her that, damn it, there's still something there. And even she hated to admit it. Was Mike wrong for shooting his shot? Absolutely not, right? Because all, all you can do is try. But it was the arrogance. It was the, I'm not even going to take account for how you feel. I don't care about your feelings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 okay, I cheat on you and all that stuff like that, whatever. So what's up with you now? I heard you ain't got a man. I mean, it was it was very, very dismissive. It was giving me narcissistic at like the highest level. That's my take on it. Did anybody else want to add anything else to it? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, or were you ready to get into the questions? I'll take well, I would like to add just a little bit more um, if I could. It has to do with Chan and it has to do with the fact that Chan is watching what's going on with Mike and Malia. And I think that um, Mike is going to get found in a dumpster outside if he doesn't leave Malia alone. And I'm gonna be honest with you, you know, um, if a woman tells a man she's not interested, the man should take that as the gospels and walk away. Even though he may know better, even though he may think, oh, I know what this is really about, she's angry with me. I just need to wear her down. No, I think you just need to to leave her alone, and that and that is outside and that is outside outside of Chan. That's just more about being respectful to her as a man to a woman. I like to pride myself in being a gentleman when I am with a young lady. I like to to treat her with respect and kind of, and, and speak to her gently and and softly. And I think that Mike's approach is totally um, inappropriate, but uh, but I understand where he's coming from, and technically he is um, he is right. But yeah, Chan is making his way downtown, and I think he's going to um, take my man Mike out uh, to the um, back to the alley, and is going to take care of him if he keeps on like like effing around with uh, Malia. But yeah, we can go to the question. I'm ready for that, sis. Yeah, and that was also another point as well. So during this whole interaction between Mike and Malia at the bar, you know, because Antonio has offered Malia up as a sacrificial lamb. So they're heading downstairs. Now he's seeing her talk to this guy. He's seeing him kind of getting a little handsy. He's grabbing her shoulder. He's yanking her over there to him because he's mad, you know, because she's telling him F off, leave me alone, go play with some kids, go play with some traffic. And he wasn't having none of that disrespect. And so Chan is seeing this and he becomes very upset. And so he's trying to size this up to try to figure out like, clearly they're not together because if they were together, she wouldn't be treating him like this. So Chan is already thinking this might be somebody from her past who's coming back and I might need to do something about Mike, which the plot just gets thicker. Go ahead, Kyrie. Well, I do hope Chan finds a dumpster for Mike. So, oh, 
on to our questions. Our first question is, uh, Kim from Virginia Beach says, Malia sees her ex for the first time in five years. How would you have responded given the history they shared and the strong emotions that were being displayed? <clears throat> Me personally, I think Malia talked way too much. Mike did not deserve any of her attention. Um, I uh, like to uh, render people non-existent when they have wronged me. Um, so I definitely would not have talked to Mike. I wouldn't have given him any, I wouldn't have said hi, you know? And I, I actually have had a, a ex that did me like that. Karina, you know who this is. <laughs> we were um, engaged and um, he borrowed my car to go out of state um, for work, what he told me. And um, he didn't bring the car back. It was supposed to be a few days trip. He didn't bring the car back, ended up being gone for, I think, a little over a week. Um, and I had to, you know, report my car stolen because I couldn't get a hold of him or anything. And then I go on Facebook and he's proposing to another woman on Facebook Live. And so, um, oh, yeah. Gosh. And then I had, uh, when he came back, you know, he called me, called me, came to the house, banging on the door, banging, begging for me to talk to him. And I'm just like, what do you want? And he's like, oh, I had to do it. God told me to do it. God, God said that, you know, it wasn't our time. And this was the woman that I was supposed to be with. Okay, that's fine. You know, and so, car at? that's what I want to know. Yeah, I got my car. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, I, um, he doesn't exist to me, you know, anymore. Uh, uh, she so yeah, so I, huh? I said she didn't have a car. <laughs> <laughs> right. Sorry. Girl, it, it was a whole thing. And so, you know, that was, I, yeah. she had other resources. Yeah, that was something. <laughs> I know it was that yeah, that's something all right. You know, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep it clean here. I'm gonna try to reach out to me. I need some help. No, you don't. You done, boo. You don't treat my girl like that and then go try to tell myself, well, I know we don't get along. You damn right we don't get Okay, let me go on to the next part. At least, you know, I'm reliving moments and stuff, you know, on that. I fight for mine. I fight for mine. At least well, may I ask a question, though? Here we go. No, I just had a question, that's all. And I don't mean no disrespect. I'm just saying, okay, that um, I understand that maybe, well, I'm okay, actually, I'll say this. I think the man was wrong for taking your car. There are times and whatnot that you can be with somebody, but then you are in love with someone else. Now, I don't think he should have borrowed, you know, your, uh, you know, your Hyundai, but I definitely think that, you know, sometimes people are, you know, just in love with other people, and that's where they want no, to be. No, he wasn't. That, so. No, but I think he, he should. No, he actually. Well, I think he, he should. Actually, he actually had just met that girl when he went to work. He didn't even know her before he even got down there. Wow. Okay, so let me just say this, if I may, and again, I don't <laughs> mean no. Again, I don't mean any disrespect. Oh, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Sometimes that is very telling about the relationship that people have with folks. When someone can just quickly leave where they are and jump into a, I mean, I'm talking about me, deep, you know, relationship with another. I'm talking to you. You're not putting any responsibility on this narcissistic man who out here, you know, proposing to people at gas stations and stuff. Like, yeah, he was was totally totally an opportunist and he got with her because she had a title. He Um, had a better opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. She had a title and could get him into doors that, you know, I wouldn't be able to, honestly, you know, so. And, and okay, here's the thing, right? Now, I can respect somebody who does it. It happens to me all the time where a woman will look at a man, see his words, and say, well, he doesn't really have that much change. Then she'll find a man who she doesn't really like that much, but he's got a lot of coin in his pocket. It happens all the time. Is it right? Heck no. And what I want to happen to one of my daughters know, and would I do it to someone else? No. As a matter of fact, I was in a relationship with a young lady who had two very influential parents. And I'm sure that if I would have stayed with her, I probably could have excelled in my career. So it was so I certainly understand I wouldn't do it because she just wasn't the person that I wanted to 
to be with. Plus, I would have probably have ended up like cheating on her anyways. But the point is, is that I understand why people do it. But should you go around breaking people? No, it's no, it's wrong. And the guy I think is a total dirt bag. Let me just throw that out there. Total yeah, dirt bag who needs to be embalmed. So there's that. That's what he thought. And a lot of these people think that I can have you, 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 and everybody's going to come on board and they're going to be a part of the stable because then he's going to be talking about some God told him to, to take it. It happens. Liz, bro, you're not going to be because it happens. You're not going to have two wives. Stop and go sit down somewhere. Well, the Abraham had lots of sons. I'm going to tell you right now because if you want another wife, that's fine. <laughs> so you got two wives. Yeah, but I up. am grateful that it happened. But, I mean, it you me to my wonderful husband now, so no exactly. hard feelings. Exactly. All roads lead you to where you are supposed to be, Miss yeah, Russia. Yeah, All roads lead you to where you're supposed to be. You just mute yourself, okay? So, Alicia, All right, well, whatever. whatever. How would you How would you react to seeing your uh, ex for the first time in five years? Or, or um, I, I, I wouldn't have a reaction. I would pretend as if I don't see him and um, get back on a dance floor and shake my booty. Had a time of my life. He, he no, when he had with me, him? he had all my with him. Bye, call him bye. Um, with, when he had me, he had <laughs> I'm all asking my, a question. He he you have to be nasty. I'm just asking a question. He had um. He had me five years ago. He had all my energy and stuff then. I'm not giving it to him now. He decided to walk away from that. You made your bed, lie in it. Keep that same energy and keep the walking away energy and I'm going to go on about my life. Um, you don't get you don't get that no more. You don't get no energy and you don't get access to me. So five years, 10 years, 20 That's years, good. it could be 10 minutes. Um, when you decide to walk away. 10 minutes, huh? Keep walking. 10 minutes. You, you know what, guys? You know what, cuz? You decide, no. You, I'm going to just, now, isn't it? I'm not. That's what I'm saying. Well, listen. Well, cuz, I mean, here's the thing. From the way you are making it sound, as though if somebody were to ask you, how long would you be faithful to your man if he went to prison? That as soon as he is sitting in the back of the patrol car and the cop knocks on the window and tells him to sit tight, you'd be like, I got that long, buddy. I got that long, buddy. No, that's not even the same thing. Okay, you got that long, buddy. I'm just saying, because the energy I'm getting from the last week, you got to show out for the post this week. We see what's happening here. Right. Um, they were together for whoever know for a long time, and he l cheated on her, I guess, left yeah. her, married somebody else. That is not, oh, you got arrested and you want me to wait on the outside. We're talking two completely different situations. He walked away. So, yes, 30 seconds after you walk away, keep that energy. Which is what I said. As soon as the cop tells the man to sit tight, she's oh like, God. well, where, where is his brother? Stop it. Okay, okay, that's fine. Right. That's fine. Right. Question down for you because you want to gaslight everybody here. Um, what would you do? Your ex of five years who broke up with you for another man two weeks before the wedding who she had been cheating on with the whole time. You see her for the first time. What is your reaction to Miss? I just got divorced and I want you back. Well, you know, honestly, I, I am, as you all know, I am a petty patty. And so I will leave a woman because she says something to me that I just simply just don't like. So I have, I'm not going to say I have very high standards because apparently the women I choose aren't always very high, but I'll say that uh, I do have a personal sense. They don't laugh at me, Miss Russia, but I have a, but I have this, um, I have this thing about it, don't irritate me and don't agitate me. And if you irritate me and I think that you're doing it on purpose, well, listen, sis, it's time to get my hobo pack and hit the skits. Because honestly, it's just like you don't like me that much or maybe I really don't like you. I don't know, because here's the thing. I understand that I brought some of it on myself by my actions, but I'm going to be honest with you. 
I will hit the turf real quick and when I, if a woman begins to bother me. And I'm going to give you ladies and the listening audience this bit of advice. A man is only, yeah, that's right. A man is only as faithful as his options. Now, women don't want to hear this right, because um, they don't so want to think about their women. Well, that's fine. Well, that's fine. Well, that's fine. What would you do for a if you saw your ex after five years because you didn't went on to how you break up with people because they asked right. you to solve? So just be gay. So, um, what would you do after five years if you saw your ex after five years and you didn't want to talk to her anymore? What would you do? Well, that happened to, 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 well, that happened to me, uh, Karina, and you, you know who I am referring to. Now, unfortunately, I think that subconsciously I got back with her just so I could like make her life miserable. I'm just saying. So yeah, I mean, I would probably do it just so I could make her feel horrible and whatnot. Now, I wouldn't do that now. This was when I was young and immature. But I'm just, okay, if I roll their eyes, but seriously. And there are some times, and I'm going to be honest with you, Women will get back with men who hurt them just so they can do them dirty and make them grovel and whatever. It happens on both sides and whatnot, right? But what I'm saying is that, yes, I did it with this young lady. And I only, I mean, unfortunately, it has some other stuff happening. But yeah, I think that was really what it was about. And uh, it, it does happen. So yeah, I would do so, but I would do it for other reasons. But now I would not do it now because it's childish. And it is immature. It's nothing that I would not do now. So let me just throw that out there, please. Yeah, okay, Cora. Thank you for that. Um, so for me, if I ran into an ex that I had not seen in five years, there just wouldn't be any talking. I, I, I like to bury people. You know what I mean? Like, I like to have a little funeral service in my mind for people where it's over. Um, I don't like to have lingering feelings or emotions for people because this is what Karina will not do, folks. And y'all may not know me, but you're gonna get to know me out here in the streets, okay? What Karina will not do is she will she, she does not double dutch, baby. We don't go back and we don't go forth. So, like my cousin and my girl said, that once you get to walking, baby, hit the pavement and run because you can't never come back over here ever. I mean, ever. You know what I'm saying? So ever, <laughs> ever. Check with your mama. Check with your homegirl. Check with your sister. She don't play that, okay? So if I would have saw somebody who I've not seen in five years, my initial, maybe, you know, maybe Petty runs in the family, Corwin, but um, I'm going to pretend like I don't know you and pretend like I didn't see you. If you try to, you know, come to me, I'm going to, oh, uh, sir, Karina, how are you? Um, I, I, is, is my latte ready? Thank you. I'm getting my stuff, okay? And it's not about uh, being mean. Let's just not do this. We're not going down this road. You approach me for a reason because you wanted BS, baby, but she's not for it, okay? So I like to have amnesia. I don't remember you. I don't know you. I don't talk about you. You know what I'm saying? Literally, when I have my grieving time and I'm hurt because of whatever happened, I bury you. You know what I mean? And that might sound really barbaric and ugly to people, but I just, I have to move on. Because Corwin will tell you, as his sister, Whenever I was not talking to somebody, there wasn't this consistent going back and forth with me, like, maybe you, I, it just was over, you know what I mean? And so there were people that it would have been like, you know how guys are, they can just stop talking to you for, for, for the stupidest things, especially, you know, I was young, way younger. Um, and I was like, well, what was that about? But after my healing stage, I kind of got to a point where I was like, he didn't deserve me anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because anybody who's out here cutting people off because I ordered critically cut fries and not the steak ones, you are not anybody I want to deal with on like a real level. Like, you know, like Corwin said, some men are only as faithful as their options. So if a better option comes along, praise the Lord. I'm praying for you and Sister Patterson, okay? Don't you bring your ass back over here. Sister Patterson, huh? <laughs> but but can I say something, though? No? Once it's over, it's no? I don't go back. And I don't acknowledge. I have amnesia. I don't know who you are because I don't get you. See ya. Okay, go ahead, Coral. Okay, what well, can I answer? Okay, I have something else. And now let me say say this to the men who are listening as well. And this is very important. This is something that you need to keep in your perm. You have to realize when you've peaked. So you can still have other options. And I mean, I mean, and the options might be downright downright trash, but you have to know when you have peaked. And you're not gonna get any better than this. 
And you may just want to hold on to this because you really aren't going to get any better, my guy. So I'm just letting folks know. Learn when you peaked. You know what? That's a whole conversation within itself because you're telling people, Cohen has, so, so I think that as people start to understand how I wrote the story and the mindset, Corwin is saying, you, you, you climb the ladder, that if something else better comes along, you throw her off to the side because some Miss New Chick who's got more to offer, she's here. So the idea of love and loyalty and commitment and faithfulness, that doesn't exist. You found somebody else who is, is more better suited for you. Next question. I think, Corwin, is it your question? I'm actually, I can't look at the questions and be on camera at the same time. And when I go off, then it turns me and then it throws me out. So can I just skip the question and just answer the question? I mean, can I skip yeah. asking it, but then just answer whatever, please? Yeah, we'll read it for you. Next question is Lupe from Galveston, Texas. Mike expressed after their five-year breakup, he thought they should let bygones be bygones. Do you think time heals all wounds? Corwin, does time heal all wounds? Uh, it heals the wound, but you still see the scar. And when you see the scar, it reminds you of what happened there. And then you might be like me, who say, sure, come on back to the fold so I can F you over. And that's how it is. Got it. So, Alicia, does time heal all wounds? Was Mike right when he said, let's let bygones be bygones? Um, I don't think time heals all wounds. Um, some are just too deep. And... Um, no, you could forget like Tupac. You could forgive, but don't forget. You know, um, learn learn from it. You know that whole let's let bygones be bygones, but move forward with me. No, um, sometimes the hurt is just is too much, and um, no, you you won't forget. Like like Colin says. Um, some are just, you know, it leaves, it, it, it can leave scars that you will see and will always remind you. And so um, you could forgive, but, you know, nah, keep it moving. <laughs> keep it moving. Miss Nikita, what about you? Does time heal all wounds? Uh, time does not heal all wounds. Time is time. But just because time is passing doesn't mean you're healing you know, and especially when something very hurtful happens to you, you tend to do what you got to do to stop that pain. You know, you don't want to think about it anymore. You want to keep moving. And, you know, like Malia, she's going to bury herself in work, you know, and in school and just, you know, just to not think about <clears throat> what, what you're feeling and, you know, have a glass of wine to go to bed, you know, or do some other things that, you know, will numb the pain doesn't mean you're healing. You won't start healing until you deal with those root issues of what you're going through um, actively and, and move on. So I do not believe in that saying. And I really wish people would stop saying it because it's really an excuse to push past the issue instead of saying, let's sit down and figure this junk out. I'm sorry for what I did. How can I help you heal? How can I help you feel better for my part in this, you know, and come together so we can get healing, so. Well said. I don't believe in the saying that time heals all wounds. I think what time does for us, time forces us to have to live with the pain. Like uh, Kyrie said, whether that's burying yourself into work, school, or having to, you know, drink alcohol, you know, to go to bed at nighttime, whatever it is, what time does for us is it just forces us to move on. Time doesn't actually heal you um, because emotional um, damage and hurt and all that stuff, it's, it's not, not physical. It's not like you cut your finger and it's, it's healed up in a week. This is, this is totally, this is totally, totally different. Um, so no, time does not heal all wounds. What time does is force you to have to move forward. And I think over time, people confuse being numb or burying hurt with healing, but it's it's not. Um, and I'm gonna also say the people who are so gung ho about time healing all wounds are usually the people who have inflicted the hurt upon others. And like 
you know, uh, Mike was saying, let's let bygones be bygones. Let's be honest. If Malia would have done to Mike what he had done to her, he wouldn't be talking about some let bygones be bygones. Let's, you know, time heals all wounds. He would have literally been like, girl, if you don't get out of my face. And I couldn't even blame him for it because this is not a male or a female thing. This is what's right and this is what's wrong. You can't mistreat people like trash and then come back and try to pick them up and be like, well, it's been five years. I would thought you would have been over this. Excuse me? You don't tell me how long it takes for me to process this. And even I'm going to say this, even if I have healed, that doesn't mean that I'm ever going to give you access into my life again. See, sometimes you have the access code for the, the one try. And after that, there, there is no more access to me, okay? So if you hurt somebody, you can't just say, well, you know, it's been 15, 20 years. Get over it. I don't have to. I don't have to allow you space into my life because now I don't trust you. And that's a big thing. That when people do you dirty, they be like, oh, that was a long time ago. Like, you, you still tripping off of that? Yeah, because I don't trust you now. And people that I don't trust, I don't deal with. Alicia, it's your turn for your question. I wanted to say um, it's really hard to heal too when you don't know what the issue is and what happened. You know, that, that'll that just leave you stuck with nowhere to go. What did I do wrong? What could I have been done differently? You don't know. There's nothing happened. And I think that's the case in Malia's. It just happened so abruptly. You know, it, it just hit a pause in her life, you know, between her and Mike, but it wasn't really any resolve of what went wrong, you know, so. Right. Okay. Um, Latasha from Frankfurt, uh, Kentucky says, why did Malia think Mike coming back into her life right now was a sign of more problems? Is she a superstitious person who believes in signs or omens? Um, I'm going to say, um, because he, he represents pain, he, um, he's toxic and, um, it seems like, um, we kind of touched on it last week. She's out with her friends and she's having a good time and kind of let loose and, you know, be free. She's out gorgeous, whatever. And then boom, something negative that she sees as negative, um, that is ne negative actually, um, pop up from behind and bring up all these emotions and, and, and pain and hurt and um, trauma she hasn't really, either she has or hasn't dealt with, you know, but it's something she don't want to feel right now. Th that night, she's trying to have a good time. That's all she wanted to do. She's celebrating her, um, her homeboys, um, business he's opening it's opening night they're vip this isn't the time this isn't the time for this so um yeah him coming back into and it's not something she wants um or even anything to deal with so um that's probably why she sees it as more problems also if you know she's saying i wish i didn't feel this kind of way um she might be a little scared um for right now it seems like she's sure she's going to stay away but she's scared because of these feelings that's being brought up she might slip up and you know um bring on that pain again by dealing with him um the the second part of that about her being a superstitious person i don't know if she's superstitious but um the thing she does read a lot into different situations. She's a daydreamer. She, you know, has a whole story about things going on um, that, you know, just from looking at somebody or just, you know, I don't know. But um, I don't think she's a superstitious person. The thing with the dreams that she's so stuck on, um, this dream guy and meeting him, um, Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see it as, you know, super, just her daydreaming. Um, that's, that's all. I don't think she's a superstitious person or um, maybe even sees it as an omen. Um, him, just another problem that she's not ready to deal with. Um, 
or even want to deal with. It shouldn't have to really. So that's that's my answer. What do you think, Karina? Um, actually, I'm going to get yeah. to Curie. I want to hear her thoughts, and I like to usually go last. Yeah, I think Alicia, uh, Elicia, I think she hit the nail on the head uh, um, about um, her just not wanting to deal with Mike. She hasn't dealt with these feelings. Um, she hasn't healed from the situation. Um, and then, I mean, just hearing that voice, I can just imagine just how all those thoughts, just everything that she has just done her best to pack up for the last five years and pack away and just move forward, just all that comes rushing back. I mean, you don't need to be superstitious. You don't need to have, I mean, just all of that, just dumping right back in your lap after you work so hard to move through it. Oh my God. I mean, all the bad feelings in the world. Come on now, <laughs> you know? Um, and I don't think she's uh, much, you know, I don't think she's really superstitious as far as, you know, this point in the story. Um, it's just like, you know, gut feelings, you know, um, just, you know, with everything that, you know, she's already gone through uh, with Mike, I think she just feels that, you know, in the pit of her stomach, you know, it's, it's just all, it's just all coming back. I definitely agree. And um, I think if you look at the timeline up into this very moment, it seems like there's been just a slew of crazy things happening, you know, um, She's dealing with the fact, again, that the, the third opening of her store didn't happen because some something and somebody else was involved. And now I, I think she's like trying to come back from that. That's a pretty big disappointment, right? Um, because anybody who knows anything about business and getting things together, it's not, not just like, oh, yeah, we're going to have that set up by next Friday. You know, it takes time and energy. So for whatever transpired to have happened, and then now she's like, okay, I'm trying to recover. I'm going to get a game plan together. You know, school just came to an end. And now I'm going to start focusing on all the things that I have to work on. Then here comes this person from her past. I, d I definitely feel like for her, um, coming back definitely felt like a sign of, of more things to come. Um, we see the introduction of Chan last week very briefly in Chapter 6. And we're going to see much more of him coming in the future. But I, I, de I definitely think it kind of sets the tone where every time you turn around, you're like, why is something happening in this woman's life? And it's like, that's, in essence, it's real life. People constantly are going through one thing after another, fighting with this, dealing with that, um, trying to navigate the world. And so him coming back, it just feels like another hurdle is being thrown at her. He's very demanding. He's very um, controlling of, apparently, of life, but especially of her. Uh, if you, if you, for you guys who have read chapter seven, you see the way he's talking to her. He's talking to her as if like, you don't understand what's happening here. Like this is a hostile takeover of your mind and your body and you're going to go with it or else, you know what I'm saying? And she's like taking back, like who comes into somebody's world and just demands themselves. And there was a part of the, of the book where it talks about Mike, Mike is just a very relentless person. He doesn't have any problems with chasing you down and forcing you to submit. He, it's, it's very thrilling for him. It's very much a game. Where I think we have a lot of these dudes now, they, you know, what are you doing? Text messages. They just, they just be throwing out fish bait, trying to see what they can get to, you know, come in. Um, and if you take the bait, you take the bait. And if you don't, it's no time wasted because you've sent that bait to like 25 other people all in one morning, right? Mike is a different kind of guy. He's dangerous because. Like Corwin said, sometimes you just keep pursuing people and you just keep talking nice to people. You just keep doing what you're doing. You're, you act like you don't hear that person talking and you just do what you want to do. And for a lot of people, it's easy to kind of get them roped back in. It's easy to kind of just force yourself upon them. You just start showing up in their spaces. You start doing this. You start sending that, you know, and he has the money. So it's not like he's broke to, you know, try to woo a lady. So I definitely think that her, her thinking of him coming back was like, it was red flags. It was like, listen. If he's coming back at this point in my life with all this other stuff that's happening, God, what else is going to happen? Like, have you ever had those moments where you're just like, I don't want to know like, what's in store next because now I have to fight this demon? Because that's literally what she's thinking in her mind now. Like, she's trying to emotionally process and get back on track. And now we have this person who has no problem with stalking, 
clearly he's been doing so, you know, telling her that um he's keeping up with her life. I wouldn't be surprised if he's been on her IG or her Facebook or whatever else she got going on. You know what I'm saying? So definitely him coming back into her life was a sign of things changing and things about to get extremely real. Okay, uh, next question. Kelly from Key West says, have you ever run into an ex and it brought up feelings about the past uh, that you didn't know were still there, like in Malia's case? If so, what was your response? Um, for me, no. Um, <clears throat> when I am in a relationship, I give my all. You know, I'm going to give 150. And even if that relationship is starting to decline or I feel like, you know, this may not work out, I'm still going to give my all. You know, I'm going to do whatever I can because when I'm done, I'm done. You know, there is no, oh, maybe I could have tried this or maybe I could have tried that. I am going to exhaust all resources while I'm in that relationship because I know when I'm done, I'm done. So, you know, when I have seen, um, <clears throat> I don't even consider them an ex because, you know, we have no affiliation. <laughs> so when I see people that I have uh, journeyed with from the past, um, there, there's absolutely no feeling. It's just, I mean, it's like meeting somebody new, you know, I don't, you know, and I don't want to talk to you, you know, it's just, you know, that's, that's me. Alicia, what about you? Um, I, 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 I personally, I don't think I've ever ran into an ex that brought up any feelings whenever, um, I did, you know, I have children. So, um, those, those meetings or whatever was planned. I don't think I've ever just been out minding my business and, um, somebody, that I actually used to roll, you know, deal with rolled up on me. Um, so, uh, no, no. Um, there has been times where I've been reminded, um, I've had, um, I'll be out somewhere and, um, we'll visit an old restaurant or something and that will bring up some feelings and thoughts about somebody that I cared about once. Um, Karina has this too, where she'll, she'll smell something and it'll bring up something traumatic that we remember um, from childhoods. Um, so not net, not a person, but a place. Like when I, um, when I go to visit Karina in Portland, um, sometimes, you know, I don't say it, but some of those places, like Lloyd's, and I think it's closed now, but like Lloyd Center or just certain places, Johnson Beach, stuff like that will bring back memories of, you know, just being with my ex. Um, and so, and sometimes they're not all negative thoughts. Sometimes they're positive too. They're like, oh, that's a good memory. Okay, next. You know what I mean? So, um, no, not a person, but I have been in places or have been reminded um, of a past situation. Thank you for sharing. So somebody caught me slipping once. And when I say they caught me slipping, I mean, they caught me slipping because they came to my door. And um, I wasn't really anticipating it because I think I was like going somewhere. So I was, our, yes, okay, that's what it was. I'm thinking back, it's a long time ago. But yeah, I was going somewhere and I had people over at the house. And um, my nephew, who literally is just a year um, older than me, he was like, I'm going to go to the store and get your candy because he just wanted to get out of the house. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he left and went to go get my candy. And so I'm thinking maybe he came back and was like, I need extra for taxes. You know how, you know how your mind gets calculated. I know mine does. So I opened up the door and this person is there and he brought a friend with him. Actually, this happened twice. I gotta stop opening up doors. That's that's the problem now that I'm thinking about it. So the first situation. Um he left the door and he brought a friend and he came in very much acting like Mike, like, yo, you know what I'm saying? What's up with you though? You know what I'm saying? And I was like, what? 
are you doing here? And um, he saw my nephew, of course. People wouldn't think that if you have a nephew that, you know, your nephew's older than you. Um, they would think, like, little baby, you know, little kid. And so he's like, oh, who that? Who that fool? And I'm like, wait a minute. I haven't seen you in how long? And you going to come to my house? You going to ask me who that is? Like, so I had to, you know, basically tell him, please don't ever come back here. And I tried to be as nice about it, but as very stern as possible. He was like, I mean, like, you just like, dang, like, you don't, you don't, you don't even care. And I was like, what is there to care about? Didn't you break up with me for another girl? Like, I'm okay. Like, I'm, I'm never coming to your door. I'm never doing that. Okay. I personally will go out of my way to avoid certain streets, locations, and folks that you might know. I don't want to make this uncomfortable for nobody. Okay. I just want you to forget that I ever existed. I'm not even offended. Like, if you don't remember me, if you don't have me in your top five greatest, that's fine. Because I am, like, the greatest for myself. You know what I'm saying? So I don't need your broke down validation, okay? Keep that hoopty. So that was that. I, I let him know very nicely. Like, you know, just leave me. Like, oh, you're being rude. And I was like, you came to my house unannounced. You brought a friend. People, even people who know me know, please don't come to my house. Like, that's just a pet peeve of mine. Rolling up to my house, and then you bring folks that I don't know. Okay, so the second situation was another one of my ex. Comes to my house and brings four guys. Apparently, he didn't tell them that we had broken up. So they're like, oh, your girl, she cute. And I'm, sir, your, your, your girl. And I said, did you not tell them? He was like, Psh. and he's doing me all like that. And I'm like, no, sir, you need to let them know that this puppy dog teenage love that we had, like, it was only a month or two, so it wasn't really like a um, a big deal. But he came to my house and basically tried to show his little friends like his his girl, and wanted me to to keep it on the hush that we had broken up. So he was out flossing, trying to flex, and he wasn't going to use me as that. Um, but again, I, I try to avoid spots and places so that I don't have to sh uh, you know see people. And again, I've done really good at avoiding people until they come to my door. So, um, as long as you don't come to my door, we okay, you know? So, all right. Um, so, I have the next question, and this is Heather from Austin, Texas. Hello, Heather. Mike seems like a type who is relentless to get what he wants, even if a woman doesn't want him. Do you think he uses love bombing tactics to dominate and manipulate vulnerable women? Ladies, what are your thoughts? Um, well, if he acts with Malia, uh, with his other females, um, yeah, I mean, oh, oh, that's what it is. And um, he's very aggressive. And I think that he feels like if he just do this and I'm, I got you and I'm here, they're just going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, okay. And then go with that because he is who he is in the community. You know, so he might be used to that. And that's why he approached Malia that way, because it's been working for him. You know, so that's what I think. Alicia, what are your thoughts? Do you think that Mike is using love bombing tactics because he feels like somebody is vulnerable? No, um, not love bombing tactics, just straight up aggressiveness and um overconfidence some women like that some women like for men to come in and tell them what to do and take charge and no this is how this is going to go and you're going to listen to me and hold my hand and we're going to walk this way I don't understand those women um I'm not one of those women but some women um like that um I guess mm, I don't know I, I I can't really remember any love bombing um from what i understand that's like when you like go out of your way like you know with the gifts and the affection and all this other stuff and then snatch it like you know and they're like whoa we're you know maybe that's that's like my um i could be wrong that that's that's what i think when i think of love bombing almost like gaslighting um and i i didn't see you know, maybe once I read more into the story and figure out, you know, because they were together for a while. So maybe he did. Maybe he wined and dined her and told her everything she wanted to hear and 
whatever. Um, when I came across this chapter, all I, you know, he's telling her, yeah, you want me. I want you. I'm back. Snatches her by the arm. I, I don't see that as love bombing. I see that as um, just straight up aggression and um, confidence. And um, some women, um, I won't say weak, but I guess vulnerable could be the right word. Um, kit will just fall in line some out of fear and then like I said and some think that that's attractive like oh he, mm, he he's taking charge you know um so I think that's that's what he does to um that's what he does to try and dominate and yes manipulate he was with her for a while married somebody else messed that up and then wants to come back to her and wants her to forget everything and just take me back and I'm I'm ready now to you know pull apart two on you so um <laughs> yeah definitely definitely um not the love bombing but um I think it's aggression dominance yeah <laughs> I love the fact that you said I'm ready to pull apart two on you um and I think that part if you just focus in on that what you just said I'm ready now to pull apart too, meaning you really haven't changed. And I think that his actions and his behavior at the bar really show that Mighty hadn't changed. He didn't even feel bad. <laughs> like he didn't feel bad for how, how this woman has been, how, how her heart has been broken. And to say like, okay, yeah, it's been five years and you haven't dated anybody but me. You know, you want me and he waited for my marriage to fail because you knew I'd be back. Like a lot to say to somebody. And, and maybe she hasn't really dated in the last five years, not because I'm just so hurt and so broken. Uh, and that could have been a part of it, you know, it, or it could have just been like, hey, she's in, extremely ambitious, going after her degrees, you know, opening up her businesses. Maybe she's been on dates here and there, but there was like real, like no real love connection. And so I also think that this story really kind of represents a lot of like society's ideas about life and relationship and marriage. Like, People don't understand a good looking woman who decides dating is not for me right now, or I'm going to date when the right person that I feel comfortable with comes around. It's just this notion of just like bodies throwing themselves at people. Oh yeah, that, that's fine. That'll work for now. We don't do none of that. Um, we'll just settle for now, or I'll just lay around with you for now, and then I'll find somebody else better later. We don't do that. Like some people, okay, might be how they get down. But over here, we just don't do that, me and my ladies. And also, I have to just give a shout out to my girls. Like, y'all eating, but y'all looking good, baby. Like, I was so proud. I was like, yeah, I told y'all, top notch, baby, top tier ladies. You know what I'm saying? Smart, beautiful, feisty, everything you need, right? So I'm just I always so proud of my girls. Y'all just be bringing it every week with the sauce. Y'all just be so beautiful. The skin be skinning, honey. The hair be flowing. The face be facing. Y'all just be. I just, I love it. So I just, I had to throw that out there. That these ladies are fierce, sexy, and fine. But um, I'm sorry. I just got, I just get so distracted while I be looking at y'all. I'm like, they fine, fine. Like, they got a little bit fine. They got a whole lot of fine. You know what I'm saying? So I just had to stop myself and say that. You know we got to match your fly, okay? Oh, you know, right. I'm like, you coming up on here, you know Something every week. I'm like, let me catch up. Hold on. Let me, let me put out the flat wire this morning. You guys always come through. I, I just I just love the energy. Beautiful women having, you know, real conversations. Um, but yeah, and Mike definitely, um, like Alicia was saying, we're not really getting the full um, of if he's really like love bombing just yet. But he's definitely doing something. And I and I definitely feel like he does prey on people who we feel that he can get away with it, you know? He feels like if somebody is in a vulnerable state, he's going to pounce on them, you know? And he's very manipulative. Um, and it just doesn't stop. <laughs> it just doesn't stop. And she, at one right. point, is like, he's not listening to what I'm saying. Like, she's insulting him. Like, get your off me. Like, you know, I'm over you. I'm not in love with you. That was a long time ago. Like, you need to grow the hell up. And then he just comes back with, oh, yeah, you're just saying that because you're just, you're hurt. So he is very much kind of just like going for it. And I think that he also feels like if she was as over him as she wants him to believe, she would have pulled, you know, Kyrie and Alicia and my move and would have just walked away like, 
boy bye like we're, we're not talking to you i think the fact that she stayed and engaged with, with him definitely made him feel some kind of way i think it made him feel like well she's still standing here well she's still talking to me you know she ain't she hasn't you know she hasn't picked up a glass and thrown water in my face not that i've done that but, you know i kind of fantasize a little bit some people need a little cold bath but anyway she hasn't done that she didn't walk off she could have you know he would have definitely followed her but you know they were in vip she could have been like you don't have a bracelet on security would have taken him away so um i definitely feel like he thought because she was talking to him that there was there, there had to have been some kind of feelings that she still had for him left and and he was just he was definitely going to exploit and figure out what those feelings were I, why do men think that like because you're trying to be nice and uh not be rude and be like oh no you know no thank you and like oh and she hasn't left yet let me keep let me shoot another shot let me shoot another shot you know and then you got to be rude and be like sir i already told you i'm not interested oh well fine you're a b anyway you ain't cute anyway like <laughs> i didn't want your thing but it was like oh okay <laughs> Why do you guys do that? This is usually time out of your day to approach me, but okay. All right. It was funny. <laughs> exactly. Now he got big energy. All right. Next question. I think that's um Alicia. That's you. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. So this is from Kevin. It's I gotta bring it to my face. Oh, sorry, I'm blind. <laughs> um, Kevin from Redmond, Washington says Malia accused Mike of being a cheater when his marriage fell apart. Was she right? Is once a cheater always a cheater? Are old habits hard to break? Also, Mike never said if he cheated or not. Do you think he did? Okay. That's the big long question. Um okay so I'll I'll um I'll start off um Was she right? Yes, she was right. He didn't deny it. Um, if somebody walks up to you and says, hey, you just robbed the store. I saw you. You didn't do it. That's going to be the first thing you're going to be like, what What are you talking about? No, I didn't. What are you talking I didn't rob no store. Um, as opposed to, well, yeah, I got robbed, but I'm not going to say it was me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> if you didn't do it, you know, you, you would... Um, definitely deny it he didn't deny it um if anything it was more like a head scratch like all right okay cool but um you know l l let's not talk about that let's talk about me and you um so i'm gonna say uh yes she was right that you know once it's and plus if everything was going fine and he was still married or what he wouldn't be there he wouldn't have approached her he approached her because his marriage ended so um and she pretty much was right about how it ended because she knows how things ended with her. Um, he's a cheater. He's a manipulator. He's a liar. And he most likely, you know, um, people get comfortable and they don't, you know, feel the need to change um, until something slaps them in the face. And they're like, oh, OK. So if he's benefiting from that, um, you know, being, you know, being toxic or whatever um that actually falls into the our old habits hard to break um and it would be like i said he's comfortable with where he's at he's gotten away with um whatever instead of trying to fix things with his wife it was oh okay mess that up let's go see what malia's talking about um and then you know that's why he's reacting so violently not violent well i guess a little violently to um Malia not jumping on board, you know. Um, so the last part of that question that says, also Mike said he never, I mean, Mike never said if he cheated or not. Do you think he did? Um, well, that's how I started that one off. Like, hey, you know, if you didn't do something, you would deny it. You would um, say, no, that wasn't me. That's not how this ended. Um we grew apart. You'll come up with anything, but when you're just kind of like hot and you're like, okay, yeah, I did, but you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to, like I said earlier, pull apart too with you. Let, let's see what you're talking about. Um, so, um, yes, 
I think she was right about um, why his marriage ended. He didn't deny it. And um, old habits, especially bad ones, that um, he doesn't feel in his mind is wrong can be hard to break. Um, Kyrie, what you think? Oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Um, I think that uh, Malia is speaking when she accused him of being a cheater the first time. <clears throat> she's speaking from experience, right? Because he had to be cheating on her with Bianca behind her back to, you know, be getting ready to get married to this chick, you know, <laughs> and she, without her knowledge. So I think that's where her initial like, well, you did it to me. You probably did it to her, too. And, you know, she didn't know about it. And then she found out about it. Um, so I think that's where that rooted from, that statement rooted from. Um, and it, once a cheater, always a cheater, absolutely. freaking lutely And for one reason, not saying that a cheater can't stop cheating, but the person that you cheated on, that's going to live in their mind forever. I don't care how good you become. That betrayal, I mean, most betrayals are set in stone. You know, it's hard to get those thoughts out of your head. I don't care how good you're being. I don't care how loving, how nice you're being. I don't care how there you are. It's always going to be in the back of that person's mind, especially if it, it caught them off guard the first time. Like, when did you have time to do something like this? Like, I, we've been present. We've been going to the park. We went to dinner. We prayed together every night. You know, like, when, when did you have time to do this? So when somebody has shown you that they can be really, um, conniving and, you know, hiding things uh, very well, it's just like, well, I didn't know the first time. Why would I know the second time <laughs> or the third, fourth or fifth? So once a cheater, always a cheater in the mind, you know? Um, and I think the next question was, are old habits hard to break? Um, habits are only hard to break if you don't want to, you know? But if you truly desire to break a habit and become a better person or change, you know, that habit, you can do it. You know, it's just about, you know, the energy you're putting behind it. And let's see. Also, Mike said he never cheated. Um, oh, yeah, Mike, Mike cheated. He don't have to say a lot of things that we know Mike did, but whatever. Even if he didn't do it, I'm going to blame him for doing it. He did it. He did it. Oh, you need some? Yeah, Mike did it. Mm hmm Yep. <laughs> I, I am with you. Um, I think that when Malia initially accused Mike of being a cheater, she was really fishing because that comes back in a later part of their conversation where she's like, you didn't even deny when I asked you if you had cheated on your wife. She was throwing it out there because she does know that for a lot of people, old habits um, do die hard. And again, like Kyrie and Alicia was saying, when you're in a position where you feel you're a hard housing man, um, you know, let's be honest. Let's just talk about him. Let's talk about how he looks. Let's talk about what he does. He's well educated. You know, um, he's got a great job, so he's making good money. Um, he looks like the guy Tyler from the show Harlem who plays Ian, which he was very fine. Oh, Lord. Um, so, you know, and there was a part that <laughs> I know it's savage. There was a part where Malia was almost just like angry, like when she saw him, like, does he look better than he looked five years ago? Like, Jesus, you know, I bet that body was on point. I bet that, I bet that cologne was cologne in. I bet the clothes was right. She talked about his face. Like, she was just like, this man showed up looking like a Tyler double, <laughs> you know, looking real good. And for, for a lot of people, a beautiful face can be very deceiving. <laughs> Even the Bible warns us about that, you know, about how beauty is passing, you know, and charm is deceitful. <laughs> so um, you have to be careful that you don't get sucked in by the outside and in this wonderful looking appearance. So, yes, I she called him out through some bait. And he didn't deny it. If you came over and said, Karina, there was $20 on my uh, table. I think you stole it. I'm going to be like, first off, sis, I don't have to take anything from anybody. I don't steal. Okay. Um, so you would defend yourself. He didn't defend himself. He was scratching his head and talking about some, well, well, she got the house and the cars because we have a child together. Like he started making excuses as opposed to being like, me? 
I'm not a cheater. Yes, you are, sir. So yes, I do believe that Mike cheated. Um, he did not defend himself in that situation. He just kind of went with it. Um, saying once a cheater, always a cheater. I feel like people can learn their lessons and change. However, I haven't met one. Like I, I, I'm speaking like out there that I, I do feel like some people have made mistakes or done stupid stuff and like, wow, like I really jeopardized everything I had. I was really stupid. I think for the majority of people, um, once you allow a person to, to cheat on you and you find out that you're being cheated on, it doesn't stop it. It continues to keep going because now they know, because for a lot of people, there are certain things that are just like a hard pass, you know, and you out messing with other women, possibly trying to bring me something home. That's a problem, right? And so for a lot of people, that's like a real, a real hard pass. Like if you do this, it's over, right? Um, the idea that you can be like, well, he made a mistake or, and, and I should just have his steak dinner cooked when he came home more often. And, 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 and he shouldn't have, you know what I'm saying? People will try to rationalize why this person felt like they needed to cheat. Oh, you know, they don't feel like they get enough love at home. And, and I just need to be more attentive. So what, what happens when you do all of those things and you're still being cheated on? You start to realize that this person just has cheating tendencies and they should just be like, yo, that open relationship is where they need to be going or they want a polyamorous relationship. People just need to be honest about what it is that they want, what is it that they, that they need. You don't waste other people's time. I, I know somebody and he was like, I've cheated on every woman I've been with because they didn't get me, you know? And if you don't understand or get me, I'm gonna find me somebody who's gonna understand me. Now he wouldn't break up with them, he would just cheat on them, okay? So he says to me, I found this woman, she's got everything I want, and I'm done cheating. And I said, are you sure about that? And he said, oh yeah, oh yeah, like she's perfect, she's blah, 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 blah. I mean, he went down the list, right? So I was talking to this person outside one day, back home in Tacoma, all outside of my mama's house. We're having a conversation and my brother was like, oh, congratulations on your new baby. And I said, oh, you and your girlfriend are having a baby. He says, oh, no, I got somebody else pregnant. And I was like in the middle of the street, like, what did you say? Because I said, you literally told me that this woman had it all. You literally said that she was the one that she would not cheat on. He's like, well, no, just sometimes she makes me upset. And I said, no, 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 because no, last week you were telling me how you hit the jackpot. Last week you were telling me that this woman was the, 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 the woman to end all women. And now you're telling me that you got somebody six months pregnant or whatever. You know? So let's just be honest. Um, some people are going to be cheaters for the rest of their life because that's just what they are. That's who, that's who they are. And I don't think you need to be a cheater. I think you just need to be open about the fact that you want to be in some kind of an open relationship or you want a polyamorous relationship. But the problem with people is they don't want to say that because then the lady's going to be like, Oh, you want a sister wife, but I want a brother husband. Um, you know, they like, no, 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 sis, you are going to be, you know, on the shelf, like waiting for me. You ain't gonna be having nobody else over here. No other Raheems is coming through. So yeah, that was that. And um, yeah, I do believe that people are just cheaters. That's what they want to be. And our old habits are hard to break. Absolutely, old habits are are hard to break because they become a part of who you are. They are a part of your routine. They are a part of you as a human being. And if you don't begin to like change stuff, if you don't say, you know what, quite frankly, I'm disgusted with the person that I am. I think that everybody has to get to a stage of their lives where they're sick of themselves. And not just like cheating. It could be like, I need to work out. It could be, I need to start really saving this money. It, it, it might need, mean I need to go back to school or I need to apply for that other job because this one over here is no bueno, right? Everybody has to hit that point in their lives where they are fed up. Because the only way to break an a old, dirty, bad habit is to change your mind. But you have to be willing to put in the work. You have to be willing to be like, yeah, I need to change this because this is not working for me. So definitely Mike's a cheater. He's definitely a gaslighter. Um, I think he's going to cheat until he can't um, anymore. And that'll probably be because he's too old. Um, <laughs> and I definitely think that old habits are, are hard to break. They're not impossible. But they are hard to break and I think that I'm not even like talking from somebody being bitter like you know I'm talking about people taking accountability and again ladies and gentlemen when you hear us talk like we, we're, we're using Mike as like the the person of our topic of our discussion but always understand this 
this could be a woman behaving like Mike, or this could be a man behaving like Mike. I don't like the whole gender thing. Well, women don't do that. Well, men do. People do, is what I found out. People do. I know a person who every time my brother brings up her name, not this brother, but another brother brings up her, I said, stay away from her. Stay away from you. Oh, she's changed and we're friends. I said, stay away from this woman because she's Mike. She's very toxic. Um, if you got a friend around, she 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 she's smashing the homies. Like, um, she she will she, she's a whole scammer too. Like she rob you, she will rob your your bank account. My homegirl got a hold of my mama's social security number. It was a wreck. So yeah, baby, I have to tell y'all about that off camera. It, you know who it was, Kyrie, because you used to work with her, remember? With her toxic self. Kyrie, oh shoot, you bringing up the big guns. Yeah, she ain't changed. She ain't changed. And so that's what I want to say that it's sometimes with men, it's like, you guys are always beating up the guys. We're using Mike as our topic of discussion, but these behaviors and these traits are not, um, they're not tied down to a specific gender. Women can be Mike. Okay, so you got Mike and you got Michelle. Okay, so it, it can go both ways with that. So I just want to throw that out there for the people who say, y'all be beating up men. We'll beat up a woman too, because uh, we went in on Erica. Yes, yes. <laughs> Next question is Lisa from Barstow, California. Hey, Lisa. Why was Mike so shocked Malia was not falling back into his arms? Does he not see how much he has hurt her? I am disgusted by him. He needs to leave her alone. I am with you, Lisa. I'm disgusted with Mike too. <laughs> and I wish he would leave Malia alone too. Um, and I don't I don't think Mike is shocked that she's not falling back. I just think Mike is so arrogant and he's so full of himself. It don't matter. He don't care, you know, and he wants what he wants and he's going to do whatever he has to to get her back and he honestly feels like he can tire her uh tire her down and wear her out and then she'll be like all right fine you know i do still love you or maybe it was a mistake i you know how you know sometimes women can just be like all right you know he keeps trying he must really mean it this time let me give him one more chance oh he really loves me this time you know all that stupid talk you know <laughs> uh, so yeah i think that's the game mike is playing he's just trying to weasel his way right back in there i feel like he's probably gonna just start showing up and he probably is gonna start dropping gifts and do i i don't know i just he's gonna start doing a bunch of stuff just to kind of wear her down um so where she's finally like all right let's let's give it a try so Alicia, what are your thoughts? I I agree with Curie. Um, I don't think he's genuinely shocked. I think um, he's just so full of himself. Like, oh my, I'm so fine. Like, why why wouldn't you want this? Um, you you need this. I'm not listening to none of that. I don't care what you're saying. Um, I'm yours and you're mine. Like, um, I'm disgusted with him. He's Ugh, toxic I don't like it um and yeah I I I don't think he's genuinely shocked he just don't listen he's hard-headed he doesn't care he doesn't care what she thinks is what he wants and so um he does he need to leave her alone go on find a new victim that's that's my answer with that mm -hmm. I think you're totally correct um I think the shocking thing for him was that Wait a minute, that a, a woman can resist me? Like, I think that's what it is. Let's be honest, like, Mike knows he's fine. Mike knows that if he was to walk down the street, he's he's turning all types of head, honey. Anybody who looks like Tyler, they turn their heads, baby, period. Like, he knows what it is, right? And I think he was just so shocked to the point that it was like, wait a minute. Uh, that would have worked on anybody else. Like, who who do you think you are, right? So I think it was like shock mixed with anger and audacity. Like, she got the audacity to sit up in here and deny me my right of having her. I mean, weren't we supposed to be married anyway? Like, I mean, and even in one of um, the parts of this scene, he says that, like, oh, I almost married you, girl. Like, 
sir, that doesn't mean anything. Like, almost, and we did, that's different. But Malia would have been, you know, victim number one. And so he's coming back around with his old, tired game. I mean, let's be honest. Some people, when they're very attractive, they don't have to do a whole lot. You know, they feel like they can just show up with the right outfit. They feel like they got the haircut. Um, they have a little cologne on, and they, they have nice teeth, and they're going to flash them. Um, and they feel like that's pretty much enough. Like, I'm here. Uh, did you not see the fit? Like, I'm here. Like, hello. Uh, you know what to do, sis. So I think his whole thing was just, he was very frustrated with her. He was like, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm doing what needs to be done here to get you back. And he wasn't really doing nothing but just, like, annoying her and talking stupid. Um, but, yeah, he was, he was pretty upset because these games that he would have been able to play on her, they weren't working. And I'm going to say that you know when you have a level of growth in your life where when people come back to you and they come and they try to do what they did last time that actually gained them um, access into your life and they no longer, it's not working, it can be deeply offensive because now it means I have to re-strategize. It's like a football player and you have to learn the plays, right? So now I have to figure out what new things I'm going to need to do for you and, and, and try to, you know, crack this code because the way he's looking at it, like, I'm getting you one way or another. You're going to submit to Big Daddy. You know, he out here talking about some poppy thought you with some new moves. I was like, oh, okay, sir. You know, you're really pulling yourself. Like, yeah, he was pulling himself. He was just, he was mad about it. And that was all there to it. So we have another question from Dante from Topeka, Kansas says, based on the bar scene, it said Malia didn't want him to see how broken she was. Why do you think Malia sees, uh, still feels broken? I think Malia still feels broken in a lot of ways because something that Kyrie had said and um, Alicia had said earlier is like, he hasn't fully he maybe dealt with everything. You know, some people are, are in survival mode. They just, they stay moving. You know, one thing happens, you just bounce back and you keep going. And I think it also is like women, particularly black women, um, there's always so much emphasis on like just being strong and, you know, and this and that and the other, that that whole strong mentality doesn't give us a lot of time to allow ourselves to be vulnerable with ourselves, to be vulnerable with our sisters. I can say that like what you see here on this camera with uh, the three of us, this is a sisterhood, you know, um, we can call each other on the phone and cry and, and, but we weren't always there. Like that was a level of healing that we had to come to for ourselves to allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to know it is cool if I call Lisi on the phone and I'm upset and I'm raging or I'm crying or, you know, vice versa if I call Kyrie and they know they can do the same with me because it's a safe spot. We are really learning a lot about emotional intelligence. We're learning about being trauma informed. We're seeing how the dynamics of parenting and different things have played out at people's homes. And uh, me and Kyrie were on the phone yesterday and she was saying that when she was a kid, if she was sick or didn't feel good, her mother would tell her, go lay down and pray about it. And I would start screaming because I was like, yeah, my mom was the same way. Wouldn't give me no medicine. It was just go, go pray about it, you know, and go lay down, you know. And I think it's just always not really stopping in the moment to say, this is how I feel and what do I do with it? Malia feels broken or, you know, feels in shambles because she did not know that that even existed. So that lets me know that she has just been moving. That lets me know that Malia hasn't really been like reflecting deeply. Because I can tell you right now, if I saw a few people, baby, it ain't gonna do nothing to me. Um, and it's not because I'm just that girl. I am, but I, you know, whatever. But what I'm saying is because I, I am. <laughs> um, but what I mean is that I have done a, I've done a level of work where it's like I've dug out roots. Whatever I felt was still, I had any connection to you. I'm not even talking about just romantically either. I'm talking about even old friends. If I saw an old friend that I didn't feel like did me right and I treated her like a sister or whatever, like it could, I, I could, last time I seen her, maybe it could have been like 10 years ago, or I could see her tomorrow. That's not going to invoke anything in me like, hmm, you know, good friends with her and everything. And maybe we can go back. No, 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 no. Because I've, 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 I've healed. I've, I've worked on myself. I know what we can do, what we can't do. Okay, and we're not going back. We don't backpedal, baby. We're moving forward with it. So I definitely think that Malia hasn't fully allowed herself to sit with herself. And I don't know. I, I, I'm just saying, I know we're only in chapter seven. But I, I, I get a feeling, and I'm not just saying this because I'm the writer, because I don't even know if I've ever even added this there. But I feel like 
she might be a little afraid of what is really going on inside of her. Your thoughts can be scary. Um, back to chapter one, when she woke up in the middle of the night and she was, um, you know, thinking about the dream guy and, you know, and about how she just loves rushing the bed so she can think about him and, and be with him. She also had to like back up off of that a little bit and, and was like, if my family and friends knew that this is what I was doing or this is what gave me pleasure, they would have me committed. So I don't feel that Malia has necessarily embraced all of herself. And when you don't embrace yourself, you don't necessarily, you know, take the time to figure out what it is that you still feel or you don't feel. Sometimes you just think if you push it away, it goes away. But we know that you can just push things away and it just goes deeper and deeper in that hole. And eventually it comes up and you have to deal with it. So that's my take on that. What about you ladies? Well, I couldn't have said it better. I think you summarized that perfectly. Um, I, 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 I agree. Um, she probably, the reason um, she still feels broken, she probably hasn't um, fully healed and hasn't really dealt with it. I think she's been in survival mode and um she's realizing that like hold on i'm supposed to be healed from this what 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 are these feelings why am i feeling this and um because he's so sure and telling her yeah because you want me and blah blah you know it's almost like um she that's why she don't want him to see her even questioning herself and questioning why she feels the way she does because she's supposed to be past this she's not supposed to be feeling these feelings um and so that's yeah that i think that's that's what's going on there why she's still broken she's been in survival mode she hasn't healed all the way yet so next question is yours alicia uh sean from lake charles louisiana says Shan, um, the new character, sees Malia and Mike fighting and becomes upset. Why does he think she is somehow his already without ever meeting her first? Is he a narcissist or a psychopath or both? Um, I don't feel he's a narcissist or a psychopath. He's, um, and I'm not even sure he's really upset. He's just, you know, like, um, He's watching from a distance. He wants to see how this is going to play out. Who is this? Um, he's on his way to meet her and then sees her in a confrontation with a guy. You know, it looks violent. She's snatching her arm away. He's grabbing her. There's some, you know, and he's like, wait a minute. Home. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, what, what, what's this about? Um, and also, um, he's had these dreams where he thinks that she might be the one. Um, he's drawn to her. He's intrigued by her. So he's already claiming, um, I don't think he's a psychopath, but he might be a little crazy to look at him and be like, hold on, I'm gonna have to kill this dude. Like, let, let, mm, let me see how this play out. Let me see if I need to kill him or not. I'm like, okay, bro, you don't need to go that far. Um, but, um, no, I just think because he's drawn to her and he's been dreaming about this girl and he thinks he's finally about to meet this dream woman and he's just trying to peep the situation. I don't think he's mad or angry, more curious, like, hey, okay, hold on. What does she got going on? Um, is this something I want to deal with? Is this, is this somebody she's still tied to? You know, he's under the impression somehow that she's single because um, Antonio Don promised her, offered her up on a silver platter um to, to him and so he's down there to go pick up his platter and he sees somebody else messing with it you know so um I don't think he's upset or he's a psychopath or a narcissist he's just simply trying to you know peep the situation um on his platter um, <laughs> so that's um that's how I feel what what, what do you think Kyrie I think Chan has already peeped Malia and she he is already claiming her. <laughs> so ever since Antonio said, pick who you want, 
he already said no. And so now he's already invested. <laughs> so after, and then he seen Malia, uh, and then he had that feeling like, hmm, something's familiar, you know? So, and then I think any man, hopefully any man that sees another man, regardless of who they are, getting aggressive with a woman, you know, a, a female, you know, grabbing them. I hope that would upset any man, you know, and be like, wait a minute, you don't treat a woman like that, period, whether she's mine or anybody, you know? So um, I hope, uh, I don't know, a little psychopath in a man isn't, you know, isn't too bad, just a little bit, just a, just a little bit, you know, it's kind of sexy you know so i mean it's okay i don't know about that narcissist stuff though y'all can leave that at home with your mama but <laughs> um i hope chan has a little tiny little bit of psychopath in him because we do need him to do away with mike um hopefully soon in the story so <laughs> um and and also i was thinking about you know how come antonio didn't his his feathers weren't ruffled like what's this nick doing here you know um but antonio seems to play his position not to ruffle anybody's feathers um, and just kind of peep and see how things are going uh, before he's going to speak up. So, but yeah. So, yeah, um, it, I do think it is a little bit strange that, yeah, even though he's having these dreams about this woman, he doesn't know if she knows about these dreams. I mean, could you imagine... <laughs> feeling like you've been having all these dreams about a person and this person ain't never dreamed about you not one day in their life not one night <laughs> i would be embarrassed like oh my god i thought we was connected no baby that's called you need medication right so like he's having this whole like i'm sorry i'm just trying to get over that part because i'm like you have basically married her in your mind <laughs> like you are not stable something is wrong here like you are you walking down the steps, you go, who's that? <laughs> and then he goes to the other time I said, uh, yeah, okay, well, uh, he might need to be eliminated. Uh, sir, you come from the Chinese triad, so you a real one. You out here in these streets, uh, a whole killer. He's talking about murdering somebody because, yeah, he got a little handsy. He got a little, you know, a little touchy-feely and uh, it was definitely not welcome. So, yeah, I definitely feel like there's something else with Jamie, I mean, but let's be honest. Like, if you do organized crime, you know, you you're not all the way there. I mean, because you, you 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 really can't be. I mean, I think if you're an organized crime, you have to be willing to cheat, kill, scam, manipulate, um, all the bad stuff. So yeah, I definitely feel like he got a little cray cray in him. And uh, I, I again, the fact that he doesn't know if she's even had these dreams, he don't even care. He like whatever. That looked like the girl from my dreams. I, I get something telling me that's her, and we gonna rock with it until the wheels fall off. Period. So that's my take on that. Next question. Period. I think that's you. Yes, it is. Claire from San Fernando Valley says Malia made references to Mike leading her on with thoughts of marriage when in fact he planned on marrying someone else. Do you think people use the idea of marriage as bait to string others along? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Um, and even like, especially like, I, well, we see it a lot. Um, well, I guess we see it a lot in men, you know, when they're not ready to end the relationship, but they're not ready to make that commitment. And they know the woman wants that commitment. And so they'll go ahead and get engaged and then they'll play out this long engagement. And then eventually they'll still never get married and the relationship, you know, falls apart. But they did that just to keep, you know, what they had going, but they really didn't want. And I don't, I don't even understand that. If you're not interested in um, being with this person long haul, why, like, why just keep it up? Why keep the charade going? You know, even if you do have a good thing, like, what's the point here? <laughs> you know? Um, so, yeah. I wish people would stop doing that. <laughs> Alicia, what is your take on that? Um, uh, my, my answer would be yes. People definitely use the idea of um, marriage to bait or string people along. Um, 
men, but women too. Um, sometimes they even use babies, but they will use the um, idea of marriage, you know, um, like Kyrie, Kyrie said, um, he knows that that's, you know, what the woman wants, he or she knows that that's what the other person desires. So it's like, okay, let me just keep them on here, you know, let me put this ring on them. And then, um, yeah, it's a long engagement, never a date set, They're, they never become wifey or husband. Um, and then eventually, yeah, they when they do find somebody they do want to marry, or if they just finally decide they're done, they're done with this. Um, I've got all I can get from you. I'm done with you. I'm ready to go forward. And then they, you know, break it off. And there's a broken promise of marriage and a failed engagement. So definitely people use that idea. I definitely have seen it uh, personally with some of my friends and even I was in a situation way, way long time ago where it was like every time there was an argument, it was like, well, I just won't marry you then. And I was like, but who asked to be married to you? Um, this was a person who definitely had on a whole mask. And I was like, well, where's that other guy at, you know, that I met? Because this ain't him, right? But every time like we would have an argument, he's like, you know what? That's fine. I, I, I can't marry you. And I was like, sir, I didn't ask for your hand in marriage. And so it was like, People use marriage as a bait, like what I have, you know, I'm, I'm a, something I can dangle in front of you. And it's like, no, marriage to me, I'm going to be honest with you. And I know for some people, this might ruffle a few feathers. Marriage ain't the end all be all. Sorry, I'm just, I don't see marriage like that. I'm married, been married going on 18 years, and I'm happy. However, I don't see marriage as the end all be all. Why? Because I've seen a lot of toxic relationship and a lot of toxic marriage. So um, if you tell me that this is the end all be all and it's all this toxicity, you can keep that. You know what I mean? To me, what the end all be all is total loyalty, faithfulness, and commitment. Some people don't believe in traditional uh, marriage. That's fine if that's not your thing. Um, some people do believe in that. So I, I think for me, I place more value on that connection versus a ring on my finger that I choose to wear or not wear or whatever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because to me, like, that's a, that's a whole other topic, though. But some people have this thing about wedding rings and stuff. Like, women need to always have on their rings to let a man know that she's taken. I have two wedding rings. And um, I don't really put them on very often. I'm very taken. And if anybody approaches me and asks, they'll get told. Sir, thank you. But, you know, I'm married with three kids. I got some real life stuff going on over here. Life insurance policies. We grown, grown over here. You know what I mean? Um, 401ks, IRAs, investments, portfolios. Like, we doing it for real, for real. So what I'm saying is that, like, yes, people are dangling the idea of marriage and, and family and all of this and babies and as a way to keep people going along a little bit longer. And I think it's unfortunate. Um, it's not necessary. Because I'm going to tell you that um, if every time there's an argument that comes up, you tell people why, that's why you won't be proposing to them, that's a, that's a good indication that you need to go now. You know what I mean? Like, you need to go now. You don't, you don't bully people into marriage. You don't dangle marriage. You don't play with children um, in relationships to keep people around. It's just it's not necessary. So, yes, people do play with the idea of marriage, family, and kids, and, um, again, male and female. And it's not okay because you have women who also will know that a guy is maybe super into him. And it's just like, I can't marry you if you don't get the this or do this for me. And it's just not right to dangle marriage. Marriage is sacred. It, it is. It's, it's a beautiful thing. If it's the right thing with the right person, both people doing the right thing. But... Again, like I said, I haven't always seen marriage as a positive. I've seen a lot of people stay married 50 and 60 years and hate each other, and there's a lot of infidelity and children in question about, is he the father? So to me, you can't tell me marriage is end-all, be-all. I'm going to tell you that our level of commitment, our level of honesty and trust, devotion, that is, that's top tier. You know what I'm saying? And so if we happen to get married, I've known people who were together 40 years, never married. But they had a great relationship. For whatever reason, those two people decided not to be married, but they lived together. 
and have a beautiful, wonderful relationship. So that's what I value. All right, T. So the next question is for me. This is from Linda in Toronto, Canada. Hi, Linda. She says, Mike told Malia that he had a faithful source that kept him up to date with her life. Who would be feeding him information about her and why? Kyrie, would you like to take that first? Um, well, we can't forget that we are in Rose City and there's a lot of little birdies around, so no telling who the bird could be. So um, I do have an idea of who it could be, but I mean, really, it could be one of 50 people. So <laughs> I guess we'll just have to keep reading and find out. Alicia, who do you think um, Mike was talking about when he made the reference that he has a faithful source that keeps him up to date with Malia's life? Who could be that person and why would they be feeding information to him? Um, person um, or people. I'm thinking the grandmother and the mother that like the gossip somehow. He's like, you know, he told her, your mom said this or your grandma said that or whatever. So he, it's her own family. Um, that's who I think is the, at least one of his sources. Like Kyrie, Kyrie said, um, it's Rose City. There could be Miles anywhere. It could even be Erica. Um, but we know for sure that grandma and mama's been talking. So. And I like the fact that you brought that in. Um, her mother and her grandmother have been in communication with him. So it seems like everybody else knew what was going on in his life or what has been happening. Except for Malia. She has no clue of what's going on. She doesn't care. She doesn't ask questions. She's moving on with her life, right? Um, but I, I definitely think that is a good assumption to make that he's getting information about her from multiple places. Grandma's talking junk, mama's saying stuff, and then he throws it back in her face. You could tell she was just hurt, like, my mom said that? Like, my grandma? You know, like, okay. And so he brought up something even about the fact of her and Justin. I'm like, well, who all knew about that? You know, um, so the Antonio, I mean, I don't think that was a big deal for him to be like, hey, you know, uh, her and Justin. But there wasn't very many people. Wendy was there. Antonio was there. Malia and, and Justin. So, oh, and, and uh, Erica. So it seems to me like Mike has a number of people from home who he talks to. And he's probably one of those people who throw bait out. Oh, hey, uh, what's up with Malia nowadays? Y'all ever see her? How she doing? She got any kids these days? She's still fine as hell. Like, he seems like the type of person who does that. But the fact that he's calling her mother and grandmother and saying that they're so disappointed in her and all these things, it's like, you can't be disappointed in me because I let this big fish go that you guys think is so grand. He let me go. And now he wants the big fish, the real one. Okay? And so, yeah. I just, I think that it would be safe to say that it's, it's a multitude of people with information feeding him um, the information that he's getting because he's nosy and he wants to use anything that he can as an excuse to get back into her life. That's my take. Next question is for you, Lily. Hey, um, Kiki from Grand Rapids. Um, hi, Kiki. Says this question is for the hosts. Um, how many of you, or have any of you, ever lied about being in a new relationship to convince your ex that you moved on? Tell the truth. Yes, I have. Um, when I broke up with my high school boyfriend or whatever, um, yeah, I made it like, oh, yeah, I found this new guy and he has a car and he has a job and he takes me out to the mall every week, you know, let you know how young I was. He takes me to the mall every week and he is so fine and he plays football and he does it and I wasn't with nobody. Um I just wanted him to think so because he had a new girlfriend and um, the little church group I used to hang with, um, they, a few of them uh, knew 
who he was and actually went to that school and was like, yeah, so he got this new girl and she's, she's pretty and she's this and she's all that. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and he still wanted to be friends. And um, even though now as an adult, I don't believe in that. When we're done, we're done. I'm either everything or nothing to you. But as a teenager, you know, I was a, um, 16 or 17 and breaking things off. It was like, I still thought, okay, no, I'm going to be his friend. And I want him to know everything going on in my life and how now I'm going to start wearing makeup and I'm going to start doing this and doing that, you know, to impress him. Even after he decided, you know, we, we weren't, you know, we both broke up but you know so yes I've done that um as an adult no um as a teenager definitely um you grow up and then you just it, I don't you know it don't matter I've I've been single everybody knows um I've been single for quite some time and it it you know it doesn't bother me I don't feel the need to try to convince somebody that I have no dealings with that I'm doing good. All I need to convince is myself um, that I'm doing good. So um, yes, I have in the past, 17 year old Lily, <laughs> um, but no, not as an adult. What about you, Karina? Um, let's go to Gary first. <laughs> Uh, yeah, never. I, I don't even have conversation with these people as if, okay? I mean, I recently, um, and when I say recently, like a few months back, um, had somebody that I journeyed with uh, try to sh reach out and sh shake my hand. And it was just like, really? Did you think that was going to work? Like, like you would ever get to touch me again? Um, okay, that was awkward. <laughs> so... Um, no, and I try not to come off so rude, but it kind of just like happens like the audacity of people when they've done things to you to feel like, like they can hug you and they can say hi and shake your hand like, what? Like, no, so I've never even had any extensive conversation with anyone to even conjure up a lie. I mean, yeah, freaking right. Like, I'm going to do you the honor of putting energy into a lie to appease you. Yeah, freaking right. Okay. Look at you, Lily. You said, I'm ready for the juice, baby. You look at me like, give me some tea. So, yeah, definitely in my past when I was younger, like, yeah, somebody was like, you know, I moved on with Teresa and she better. I'm like, okay, well, praise God for you and Teresa, you know. Um, but, baby, I, I, I would pull a Lily. And I think, like, we were so much alike with that. Like, I was probably somewhere on the phone with you speaking. Like, girl, say he got a this. And, and say he take you there. Like, I could definitely see where we built that whole lie. And um, that's definitely some stuff I did when I was a teenager. I'm like, oh, okay, so you don't want me. You, you moved on. You found somebody prettier, somebody better. I'm okay. Because I found somebody cute, too. Uh-huh. And, baby, yes, honey, I, I would make up a whole lie. A whole lie. You know what I mean? I, he, he'd be so good that he didn't even exist, you know? And so... I definitely did that as, as a teenager um, to deal with the fact that I was hurt and I didn't want to make it seem like, you know, I didn't have nobody. But I think now as an adult, I, I wouldn't lie. I don't have to lie. I feel like it's, it's a flex being able to be on your own and be comfortable in your skin. Like, you know, understanding that you're not out of a relationship because nobody wants me. Nobody finds me attractive. It's I haven't found anybody who's worthy of my time. You know, um, that energy is everything and chemistry is everything. And if we're going to be together and make this thing happen. We both have to get along. We both have to like a lot of the same things. And again, chemistry is everything. So, you know, you don't just want to rush off and, and play games with yourself or anybody else. Um, but Malia, he has a moment, you know, and, and I think that in the heat of a moment, he blurted out something and, you know, I got this new guy and it's getting serious and he's about to show up any minute now. And, and Mike's like, oh, I a lie. You know, she's like, she was horrified that he didn't believe the lie. She's like, that was a good one. And you just made me waste it, right? She was so outdone. But it was like, when she walked back um, out of VIP, she's like, why did I lie? Like, she automatically just started kicking her own butt. Like, man, now... I'm going to be up in the club tonight. Dude's not going to show up. So either two things going to happen. You're going to know I told a fat lie or you're going to be like, you're desperate. 
and that's gonna look even worse because either you know you're lying or and you're desperate or like you got ghosted just like he heard you you know what I mean he would show up like you was out here thinking okay you know he's coming through Lamont I don't know anybody named Lamont but I'm just gonna go with it you know Lamont's coming through he should be here about you know 11 45 he's trying to be on his way and then Lamont doesn't come through so then you look kind of like you know you better curb sis like that's embarrassing so either way Malia knows now this isn't gonna work out. She's like, the hen's about to start, you know, cackling. I, I gotta figure out an exit strategy. I, I gotta leave because one thing I'm not gonna do is sit up here and be embarrassed. Like, we not gonna do it. So yeah, I think she definitely had a, a teenage girl moment. Cause I feel like a lot of teenage girls do stuff like that. Like, so no, I'm not ashamed of me being a foolish teenage girl. Like, I did it, so what? But I think as an adult woman, you know, when you like really are standing in your own strength and you feel good with about yourself and the choices and decisions that you make, you ain't lying for nobody. I ain't capping for you, bro. I'm just not gonna do it. And um, so I just like she had she had buyer's remorse. Like she tried to buy that lie and immediately, you know, she regretted it because she was like, no, like why didn't I just tell him that I wasn't interested? I didn't have to make up a, a lie. I'm great within myself. All that extra stuff was not even necessary. So yeah, that's where we was at with that. You know what I mean? And so, ladies, are there any final thoughts? Look at y'all. Like, mm -mm, I'm, I'm good. Curie over there, like, she got her bowl of salsa and her chips, and she's ready to go and do what she got to do. I love it. Thank you both so much for showing up. And again, our other co-host, he had to get off and get onto another Zoom call because he likes to overbook himself most days. But, you know. That's a poor one for you. So that's all for this episode of Rose City, the after show. We hope you enjoyed our discussion on episode seven. Don't forget to tune in next week when we will be diving into ch to chapter episode eight, okay? If you haven't already read it, um, you have some time. We're, we're not going to be meeting for another seven days. So you have time for us to, you know, get you all up to date and everything like that. So we can jump on in, read. The book is amazing. The first three chapters are free on Kindle Bella. So there's really no reason for you not to check it out, okay? I'm sure you'll be hooked on the story. New episodes are being published every week. We would love to hear from our readers. So please add your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your theories here to the link below in the comment section. Um, you can also find us at Rose City The After Show on Facebook. All links will be provided in the description. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you again next week. And also thank you for those who we featured this week. There are organizations are amazing and we're not just putting them up there like these are companies that we shop at and we buy stuff so support these organizations that we are putting up here thank you so much Bye.